G'day guys, and today we're going to be having a look at what's going on with guns in New Zealand following the Christchurch massacre. So as you probably know, the New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has come out and announced some increased gun control. She has said, uh, today I'm announcing that New Zealand will ban all military style semi-automatic weapons. We will also ban all assault rifles, we will also ban all high capacity magazines. Now what is exactly does she mean by this? What exactly is a military style uh, firearm as defined by the New Zealand government? Well, the New Zealand government categorizes firearms into four different categories. So you've got your pistols, which are firearms shorter than 30 inches. You've got your restricted weapons, like selective fire assault rifles, grenades, and rocket launchers. There's actually a few of them. I read an article that was like nine rocket launchers bunging around in public hands. That's pretty funny. And then you have your military-style semi-automatics, and they have a few a few um, features that slot them into this category. We have a folding or telescopic butt, a bayonet lug, a military pattern freestanding pistol grip, a flash suppressor, a magazine that holds more than seven rounds, and a detachable magazine that holds more than ten rounds. So that's the type of gun that the New Zealand government wants to take out of the hands of the public. So how are they going with this? Well what they've done is they've announced an amnesty and buyback program. Essentially, no questions asked, hand your guns into the government and you'll get a bit of cash as compensation. And a few people have done that. Well. How many people is it few? Well, according to BuzzFeed, uh, since last Tuesday, only 37 guns have actually been handed in. And we don't know how many people actually own those guns. If you have a look at New Zealand gun statistics, there's about 250,000 uh, licensed gun owners, but there's somewhere between 1.2 to 1.5 million firearms in New Zealand. So it's quite clear that each individual owns several guns. So it could have been just maybe a handful of people that have handed in these 37 guns. It's not necessarily a one for one thing. So, 37 down, but how many to go? Well, that's a little tricky to say. If we have a look at this article from stoff.co.nz back in 2018, it says that uh, of the estimated 1.5 million firearms owned in New Zealand, 15,000 are registered military style semi-automatic rifles. The key word in there is registered. There can obviously be unregistered firearms in circulation. Another complicating factor is the fact that something that isn't considered a military-style rifle with modification can easily become one. The example it gives is that, look, we've got this gun club and they have their the Wellington Service Rifles Association AR-15, which is not considered a military-style weapon, can be made one by simply inserting a larger magazine into it. So what you essentially have here is lots of little subsets making up the whole set of military-style semi-automatic weapons. We've got the 15,000 registered weapons, we have an unknown amount of unregistered weapons, and then we also have um, mixing in between the two groups guns that are not military style but can become military style very easily with the addition of different stocks, different barrels, different scopes, different magazines, and that sort of thing. However, if we just even take the smallest number of 15,000, we can see that the buyback rate or the handing in rate is very low. So from the Friday massacre to the Tuesday announcement of 37 guns being handed in, we can extrapolate that that is nine and a quarter guns per day. That's not exactly what we'd call a massive outpouring of support for the buyback scheme. Indeed, the number on screen you're seeing right now shows that less than 1% of the guns, the military style weapons, have been rounded up. If the buyback scheme continues at this current rate, to even get a thousand of these military style weapons out of circulation, it's going to take almost a third of the year. This poses a bit of a conundrum. What exactly is the New Zealand government going to do if people aren't forthcoming with their guns? If the New Zealand government tries to play a very hard line, tries to hardball people, there could be a lot of unnecessary bloodshed. And of course this, is going to, this isn't going to affect the Prime Minister, the Attorney General and that sort of thing. It's going to affect mostly the police officers who are just, just want to keep the community safe. And also the people who just want to be able to defend their homes and their families. As it has been pointed out many times, it is certainly strange that when someone in your community goes out and murders 50 people, that you would want to be less able to defend yourself after the fact. It's very strange. And also not just defending yourself, but your family and your property. If I was in New Zealand, I'd want to cling to my gun even tighter, because any buyback scheme, any banning of guns, is not going to affect a criminal. If there is another Brendan Tarrant out there who really wants to go out and murder people, is he going to hand in his gun? 
Well, obviously not. He really wants to go out and murder people, and he can go out and murder people all the easier if people are rendered defenseless. Something else of note that has been pointed out is the speed at which this gun control was enacted. Essentially, the day of the shooting, or the day after, I can't quite recall, the Attorney General of New Zealand essentially said, hey, we need to get rid of these semi-automatic weapons. And just like that, that was all it took. Now, I want you to consider for a second what it would take in the United States for semi-automatic weapons to be banned. There'd need to be a constitutional amendment, which would be a whole process through the Senate and the House and all that sort of stuff. The point is, it would be a very slow process. It would take a long time. There'd be lots of back and forth and that sort of thing. And what this shows to me is quite clearly the difference between a right and a privilege. Now, within the United States, you have the constitutional right to own and bear firearms. Whereas in Australia and New Zealand, you do not have a right to own and bear firearms. You merely have a privilege meted out to you by the government. And as soon as the government doesn't feel like you deserve that privilege anymore, it can take it away very, very quickly. In my mind, it's not enough just to be able to legally own firearms. You must have a constitutional right protecting you from being abused by the government. Because otherwise, as is happening in New Zealand, they can just take it away whenever they feel like it, using any excuse. You can go back and look at the article I'll link in the description, and you can see various police, um, police people talking and saying, you know, it'd be really tricky to ban guns and stuff like this. I can't really see it happening. These are semi-automatic military styles. But as soon as you get a big enough catastrophe, as we've seen in Christchurch, it gives a perfectly good excuse for the government to come in and enact sweeping gun control. In this instance of catastrophe, which may very readily happen in your society, a privilege cannot protect you at all, only a right. So that's about all I have to say on the matter for the moment. It's very stock standard libertarian stuff. I don't believe that taking firearms away from law abiding citizens will help prevent any kind of horrible crime as we've seen happening in your country. All it will merely do is concentrate firearms into the hands of people who want to do horrible things and take away from the ability of law abiding reasonable people to defend themselves, their property, their friends and their family. I believe this is a terrible move by the New Zealand government, but unfortunately at this time, authoritarian confiscations and censorship is very much in vogue at the moment. Hopefully this paradigm will end and we can enter into a new age of freedom and restricted government. It will require some effort on our part, however. I am doing what I can with my limited resources to hand, but look at what I can achieve. I can make videos almost every day, striking back against false narratives and that sort of thing. Thanks all for sticking around, and have a good one.